Today is a special day, as you know, we are worshipping the Goddess who came on this earth nine times before to kill all the demons and all the negativity and relieve <coughs> all the bhaktas to worship. All her work is already being described. Despite that, they find new type of devils, new type of negative people have come back. Perhaps it had to be. This had to be, maybe after all it's Kali Yuga. And the drama of Kali Yuga would not be performed unless and until they are there. So to complete this drama they came. But this time is going to be a very different type of war. It's going to be the war of the peaceful people. And the peaceful people are the most successful people in every walk of life, even in the world. It did not work out before. They say that when Chinggis Khan came, he went to a very big monastery of Buddhist near Gaya and killed all of them. There were about thirty thousand of Buddhists there and they didn't say a word and they were all killed. So people started disbelieving in Buddhism. They said, what kind of a Buddhism is here, why didn't Buddha save them? That's human style of thinking. Buddha should have saved these thirty thousand people who were peaceful, who were resisting, in a manner that was no resistance. And so they were all killed by this horrible fellow called Chinggis Khan. But you'll be surprised in this Kali Yuga, this Chinggis Khan has been praised by many authors and there are books written about him. He was not a Muslim but some sort of a crackpot. He finished off many mosques, he destroyed many beautiful buildings and also he came to India and ruled there for a short time. All that's a history. In the same way <coughs> there have been wars, between Christians and non-Christians, between Muslims and non-Muslims. All kinds of wars we have heard of where only the faithful got lost, the real people got lost, the one who worshipped God with full faith, got lost. So many people become atheist and they said there is nothing like God, nothing like His divine power, it never existed. 
we were stupid, we were foolish to follow all this. And those who were in charge of religion took full advantage of that and said that these people were sinful people. These people were not godly people and that's how they were killed by us and we were victorious. The idea of victory they had, that they have been successful and so many people have been butchered by us. So we come to Kali Yuga and in Kali Yuga same thing has started in a subtler way, in a different way it has started that there's a big war going on between the people who are anti-God and who are using God for their own purpose. Very dishonest, very corrupt, very cruel people. And they are using the flag of God, that banner, which they have no right to use. Then there are Sajogis who have got their realization and they have to fight them. Now the difference in the previous wars and this war is very different. In those wars, see all those who were supposed to be victorious. This was after all the nine battles of the Divine Mother. The negativity that came up and which became successful started feeling very confident that we have achieved what we wanted. But in Kali Yuga, in the light of Kali Yuga, all those historical victories are regarded as shameful things, as something very aggressive and nonsensical. This is now being described everywhere. Like the white-skinned people went to America and killed all the rest of them there. Now that is coming into light. All these people who thought themselves to be victorious, their children, their grandchildren, their progeny is ashamed of them, ashamed to call that they were their forefathers. Up till the last war, this awareness which has come is the real victory of modern times of this Kali Yuga, that everything that was accepted as a part of the game, as the lifestyle you can call it, is now being challenged in modern times everywhere. Whatever is aggression, whatever is oppression, Whatever is cruel is now punished also. You see, so many war criminals might have escaped, but so many went into trials. Never happened before. Nobody took Changez Khan to a trial. Now, in a very subtle way, all these aggressive people are getting now afraid. 
that they will be questioned and they may be tortured. It started, I don't know where, but definitely at the beginning of the Kali Yuga. If you remember, in this country was a great aggressive man called Mussolini and ultimately he was hanged. In Germany there was a very powerful man called Hitler and Himmler and all this. God knows what happened to them. Even the Germans don't want to take his name. They are all ashamed of him. Then we had somebody, say in England, Warren Hastings who came to India, he was put to jail. This was never done before. If Napoleon aggressed people, he thought he was very victorious, but he could not continue with it. He had to face it. You see, anybody who has been aggressive, who has been dominating, who has been very cruel, demonic, has been taken to task mostly in his lifetime. Now, if not in his lifetime, afterwards he was maligned and he doesn't have a name like a hero or anything. People don't want to erect their statues. So the awareness has come in the mind of the people. Like a person like Stalin, who ruled Russia once upon a time. Today you can't see even one statue of Stalin. These are modern times. See the power of modern times. And that is frightening to those people who think they can get along with whatever they are doing. It is going to be very soon understood by them that they have to stop all this nonsense, otherwise they will suffer. It's not those whom they are dominating, but those who are dominating will suffer. They will suffer physically, they will suffer mentally, they will suffer emotionally and also their fame will be in the mud. So today's victory of the power of the Divine Mother is being one very great work is to expose. And this exposure will be condemning publicly those people who are doing wrong. If you see from that point of view, you will understand how we are victorious now. Many of you felt very sad that I didn't get the award. This award makes no difference to me and to you also, I must tell you. Because you have come without I having any award and many will come without having any award as such. But this time, for the first time, if you notice, the people who got award are condemned. Even now they are writing against it. Even now they are criticizing. So those who have been, they thought they were very smart, but the smartness is out now and I don't know how long will it go on, because even today if you use open a newspaper, you find something about it, that how stupidly they have done it, they can't understand what was the reason they have done it. Not only the people who selected are criticized, but very much more the people who are selected. Now, as being Sajogis, we have to know what is the difference between the consciousness at that time and awareness at this time.
That time it was necessary to kill those demons, finish them, but they are back again on the stage. Now, at this time, when it is Kali Yuga, they are exposed, they are condemned, they are put in the jail, they are now punished publicly. So, the collective awareness has got such a great victory, I think, over these people who so many came, killed and died without getting any punishment out of it, without getting any defamation out of it. Now let us see what is consciousness and what is awareness. It's a subtle subject which I think you all can understand. Consciousness is that when you are made conscious, you become conscious of God. Like I have my hand here, all right? But normally I'm not conscious of it, that I have a hand. If a man is sleeping, he's not conscious that is sleeping. When you tell me you have a hand, I will become conscious. Or something pricks me, then I become conscious. Otherwise I am unconscious about it. I am absolutely unconscious about my eyes. I am seeing everything. But supposing I become blind, I can't see, then I become conscious of my eyes, that I have got my eyes through which now I cannot see. So once you say there is this hand, the consciousness is there. This we can say is the knowledge about the hand, that you get knowledge about the hand. But once you are not conscious of the hand, that knowledge is disappeared. So to say there is ignorance or there is knowledge, both things are just the same. You are not conscious of your hand, so you are quite ignorant about it. Now supposing somebody says, your hands are very beautiful, somebody remarks like that. Then I become conscious of my hand which is beautiful, otherwise I never knew they were beautiful. So normally all human beings live at that level, that somebody has to tell you. Now somebody said, you are wearing a very nice sari, all right? Then I look at it, yes, it's very nice, I never knew. So somebody has to tell you, then you become conscious, otherwise you are not. So we all human beings at that level are like that. Now, what is awareness? That's a different thing. That means if I see somebody is attacking me, I put my hand like this. That means I'm aware I have a hand. I'm not conscious but I'm aware that I have a hand, I have to use it. Like here in Italy you go on using your hand all the time like this. That means you know you are aware that you have got hands, that you have to use them for expressing something more sort of emphatically. So we are sort of also aware 
of our body, we are aware of others, we know about others, we know what sort of person another one is. Up till you are self-realized. After Self-Realization, what happens? It's very interesting. After Self-Realization, you go beyond both these things, consciousness and awareness. Because you go beyond thought. You have gone beyond thought means what? anger, all kinds of ideas, all kinds of uh, aggression, everything is maneuvered or worked through your mind. So if your mind is lost, what will you do? There's no mind anymore. You exist with reality. So there is no ma mind to con communicate. We call it thoughtlessly aware. Means what? We have conquered all our enemies by giving up one enemy that was our mind. There's no mind to suggest, there's no mind to tell you. So once there is no mind, you are lost. Now it is being said that you ask a question to yourself, who am I? As soon as you ask this question, you become thoughtless, so you get lost. You cannot answer this question. Otherwise you might say, I am a woman, I am this, I am that, I am a uh, bishop or I am a pope, I am this, I am that. But once you are a realized soul, who will tell you who you are because the one which tells you is the mind which doesn't exist, no thought. Means you get dissolved into yourself. This is what is reality. But you are aware also. Now, that's another point. If you ask yourself a question, you are not there. But you are aware. If your Navi is catching you immediately, you know, my Navi is catching, I have got liver. Don't have to ask questions. Or somebody standing near you, left Swadeshana, oh my God, this is this one. If somebody is very angry and hot tempered, immediately you feel such heat from that person. So, oh Baba, run away from this man. So, this is a new realm you have entered into reality, which you are never aware before. Now supposing there's a very bad man standing near you, he might be a thief, he might be a murderer, anything, you will not be even conscious of it, leave alone aware, normally. But once you are a realized soul, you become aware of the whole. That is reality. What are the problems? In the collective, you become aware of the collective. You become aware of the problems of the whole world. Now, this awareness is very different. The first awareness, as I told you, is like this, that if somebody tells you you are this and this, 
you become aware of it. In this nobody has to tell you, it's just there. You are there, you know what it is. And this is what you have achieved in these modern times, which is the blessing of the modern times also, that we know now <coughs> who we are. You always say, we are the pure spirit. Yesterday also I heard it. Are you sure? What makes you believe that? That you are the pure spirit. I mean, you haven't seen your spirit, have you? You haven't seen yourself, what you are. Then how do you say you are the pure spirit? It's just you are saying something, because I say so. But you are the pure spirit because whatever is the description of the pure spirit is given, that it is aware of the divine power. It is aware of the divine power. And that is how you are the pure spirit. Because only through pure spirit, as your personality, you can be aware of this all-pervading power. This is written in all the shastras, in all the scriptures, everywhere. And what do you know you about yourself? That you are the spirit because you know about your own chakras, you know about your own nadis. Now what has happened is that you are separated from yourself and you can see yourself. You see yourself very clearly and you start seeing yourself as the present and the past and the future. In the past, what I was, you see, you're shocked of, my goodness, I was like this. You see it. Through this present state, in the present state you see. Then you start forgetting it, forget the past, forget the past. Then still you have the future. Then you start thinking about the future. First future, they think about their own children, their wives, such of those. What will happen to my children? What will happen to my wife? Then they think, what will happen to Sajo? Then they think, what will happen to Mataji? Also they think, what will happen to this world? Because your awareness has expanded. You are not in the limited sphere now anymore. You can think of your children, you can think of your wife, also you can think of the whole world and all the problems of the world you think. So you have reached that state, all right? Up to that state we are. Now what is the thing that covers up all this? or gives you solutions, say for your children, for your family, your wife, 
everywhere. What is the solution? Your mother believes in giving solutions, not only the problems. Because these days there are not problems that existed in the Navratri. They no more exist. That you can take a sword in your ha hand and go and kill something. No, it doesn't. It's not possible. Cut what? So the today's problem as they are, as we see, within us, we see the problems, we are aware of it, and we want to do something about it. Whether we are in the past, present or future, we see the problem. So now, what is the solution? We have no weapons, nothing to fight. We don't know also, so many do not know even how to hold a sword in the hand. And so many don't even want to hold it, because they are so much in compassion, in the ocean of compassion enjoying themselves nicely. They are enjoying their own compassion and compassion of others, compassion of their mother. But then how to solve the problem? The problem can be solved if you become very powerful yourself within. Where is your attention? You have to move inward. Where is your attention? You have to become very powerful. I have done my job, I have given you realization, you have grown so much, I have explained to you, I have told you everything is done. I have given you lots of love, ocean of love I should say as you call it, whatever it is. But now you have to nourish yourself. You have to become powerful within yourself. So what is the way you can become powerful? First you must believe that you have transcended your human personality and you have now become a superhuman being. First of all, this must come in. This is what we call as faith. This faith is not false faith, is not blind faith that you believe into something. But it's a fact. I have hundred times I have told that you have first of all faith in your ascent in your position as such a person. For this meditation is very important, very important. Without meditation you cannot have full faith in yourself, because you can't know yourself by saying, who am I? You cannot. You try now, ask a question within, who am I? You'll be lost. So what should be the faith then? Because when you ask a question, who am I, you are lost. So we reach just 
stage where I have to tell you that faith is not mental, it is not emotional, it is not physical, but it is a state of your own being, which we can call as a spiritual state. In the spiritual state, nothing can disturb you, nothing can overpower you, nothing can dominate you. Because that state if you have, that means you are part and parcel of reality, then you are a honored member of the God's kingdom. Then you are the most revered personality. Then you are like a deity. Then you are like a gana. In that state when you are, it's a state again I say, beyond the human state. You are extremely powerful. There's a story about Nizamuddin, great awliya, great Sufi in India. There was a horrible king, I think what Shah he called himself, and he would not go and bow to him. So he was very angry. He said, I can only bow to God and to nobody. The Shah said, if you don't come and bow to me tomorrow, I will cut your throat. And that night the throat of this king was cut. It's a story, but it's a real story. Somebody came and cut his throat, it was not Nizamuddin Shah, he would not do that. So that state if you reach, what we call is the state of Shraddha, state of Shraddha which is enlightened, enlightened faith. It's a new type of mechanism. That is, you become part and parcel of the whole. That means the moon, the star, see? I tell you, I never told the sun that it should be there for the pujas. I never told, last time, this time, never tell him, there's no need to tell. It's all done. I don't tell all these uh, vibrations uh, to make a cross or to show this, all these miraculous photographs, I don't tell them, there's no need to tell. They just do it by themselves. I am sometimes surprised how ingenious methods they have of their own, how they manage things. I am myself surprised. I didn't tell them that these two persons who were selected by this award should be so condemned by every newspaper. It all works automatically. It just works. Only thing, if I have anything, is just complete, complete faith that I am at that state. And that's why there is complete patience, saburi. Complete patience.
And that is what we have to learn. It will all happen in any case because you are all at that state. Only meditation is important, very important. For me not, but for you all. If you all can meditate now, just for ten minutes also every day, it will help you a lot. Now why do we have all these statues and, uh, I mean, the Mother and the Hanumana and Ganesha, Christ? Because to begin with human beings cannot understand anything which does not have a form. They cannot go deeper unless there is a form. But they went to another limit of using any stone, anything as God and all. But now you have discretion. You know what is to be worshipped, what is to be treated as a higher personality, that you know. But before that they would worship all kinds of people, like now people worship Pope, you know that very well. But now what to do? They are not only blind, they are not only unaware, but they are also not conscious of it. They are all at a such a level that you cannot tell them. So you are a new type of people, I should say, who have tried to fight it out, to struggle out, to know about the Absolute Truth. Unless and until you know the Absolute Truth, you are no, nowhere. You have no discretion, you have no understanding, you have no wisdom. But once you know the Absolute Truth, then you should not by any chance be halfway this and halfway that. That's a very dangerous state of affairs. Say a seed is sprouted, it is neither a seed nor a tree. If it doesn't grow, it is useless. That happens to your awareness. I'm again talking of your consciousness, awareness. And then you are neither here nor there. There are many people who come to Sahaja Yoga, perhaps maybe to find some peace, but I get letters my father is sick, my mother is sick, my sister is sick, then otherwise my husband is fighting with me, I am seeking a divorce. Or thirdly, I have lost all my money, I must have some money. Fourthly, I am a great artist but I, my art is not selling. All these stupid problems they bring. Huh. My children are no good, they are troublesome. Then my wife is fighting with me, my mother is fighting with me, brother is fighting I said, now what sort of sajog is this? The state of being one with the reality means that the whole of reality is at your feet. All of it works for you. And once you even get a glimpse of that state, I tell you, you become so much peaceful within yourself. If you say, I'm the king, I'm the king. If you say, I, I'm the beggar, I'm the beggar. 
what difference does it make to that state which is like a purest of pure gold which cannot be tarnished. Such a state of mind we have to tell. It's a more a challenge to us. We are Sajogis, all right. We have got realization, all right. We can sing very well, all right. We have achieved good positions, all right. We are nicely married, all right. We got nice children, we have got everything, we have got jobs, this, that, now. Suddenly one negative force comes into trouble, so what? So what? Otherwise how will you know what you are? If there is no darkness, how will you know you are the light? It's a challenge to your own state, at what state you are. The word state is not so explanatory in Sanskrit, it's Swarupa. Swarupa. Rupa, no, Rupa. Swa is yourself and a Rupa is form or state. That state is possible for all of you by saying, not this, not this, not this, not this. As it is, your mind has reached that state that there is no mind. You can't do that. But you have to develop a kind of a personality that realizes what you are. But in that realization, you are just aware of it, not conscious of it. Or for example, I'll tell you. I'm aware that I am Adi Shakti, I'm aware, I know. But when you say Jai Shri Mataji, I also say Jai Shri Mataji, forgetting that I am the one you are talking about. This is actually should be the stake. That you are aware, yes, you are aware in the sense in the, uh, I don't know how to say, but I am aware, I am that. If you ask me, Mother, are you Adi Shakti? I said, yes, I am. Because I know that, that I am. But when you say, uh, Jai Shri Mataji, I forget that I am Adi Shakti, I also say Jai Shri Mataji with you. I forget, I have to tell you, no, no, you can't say. <laughs> it's very interesting. Now, you make me sit here like a queen and give me a present, this thing, that thing, I mean, all right. That's your idea. But to me, you see, I am complete in myself, I think so. This in Hindi, we say that we have all of our own. I am got lost into myself. All right, you do this, all right, if you do that, all right. If you don't do it, it's all right. To me it makes no difference, it may make difference to you, but to me it does not. I always have been saying that don't give me any presents, don't give me any presents all these days. So the only argument is that in whole year we give you once, so why should you mother object because that gives us joy. All right, if you think it gives you joy, do it. But to me it doesn't matter.
because I don't think I'm there. I'm just seeing you sitting here, all right. They're all realized souls, all right. But I'm one of you. I don't think I'm very special. But if you ask me, then I will say, all right, I'm Adi Shakti. But I don't think Adi Shakti is very special also. Because I have no mind. But otherwise, I don't think it's something special. Because somebody is something, so what? Now, supposing son is son, so what? He is a son. If somebody is Adi Shakti, so Adi Shakti, so what? But for you it is credited. Because you were not born realized. You got your realization. So you are special. You are great. You have achieved something. I have achieved nothing. I have been like this and I will be like this. Whether I fight the devils or I sit before you makes no difference, I will be like this. But for me, you are great because you have achieved this. Today to see you on this Navratri day, so many people sitting to worship me. So many people are here, so many Sahaja Yogis. It's so It's not my achievement, I tell you. It's your seeking. Because I've been on this earth many a times before. That you know. But we never had like this. So many came, got crucified, died, this, that. I never had people of this kind. So again we come to the same point that we should be aware of ourselves. Complete Shraddha in yourself. If you have some Shraddha in yourself, you will have Shraddha about me also, because we are not different. If you believe this is water, then everywhere there is water, I believe that that is water, isn't it? Because I know this is water, so wherever in the world there is water, I know it is water. So if you know you are a Sahaja Yogi, anywhere there is a Sahaja Yogi, you know there is a Sahaja Yogi, this is Sahaja Yogi. But as far as you are concerned, you forget how great you are and how far you can. I'm very proud of you, don't know. But because I'm a humble person, I don't know how to show off. So I have such nice children, so many of them, so lovable. Those bhaktas, for whom she killed so many demons and all that. We are not like you. We are much better, much higher, of a much greater quality. But you must know that you are. And don't behave like those people who were of a very rudimentary nature. You have grown up, you have prospered, and now the fruits we can see. I don't know what to do for you, really. But have faith in yourself. Then you will see how much faith you will have in reality, that there is reality with you at every step, every moment. No fear, 
no sense of achievement, nothing. Done now, finished. When there were five such yogis, I was happy. When there are so many, I am happy. But I, when I see so many, I think there are so many powerful personalities who are one with reality. This collective oneness was never so. And so I would say that on this day, what we have to do is to kill the devils within ourselves. That's all. If you want to really worship Me, that's what you have to think, what are the devils within you. That's all. You don't have to worry otherwise for outside devils, they cannot do anything to you. May God bless you.